Good evening and welcome to WGLNA season two, week number three, and today is day number two. We are one day closer, one step closer to finding out which teams will be joining us in Las Vegas this November 16th and 17th to compete for a $100,000 prize pool and to be crowned the season two champion for America. I'm your host, Joshua Clutch Gray, joined on the set by Randall Rukil Holcomb. It's just going to be the two of us tonight, but don't worry, we're going to have lots of fun and maybe another appearance by Big Dave a little bit later on. Uh, Randall, yesterday we had six matches, quite a whirlwind of activity, and kind of the, the theme that we saw from the different teams was hesitation happening. We talked about the nerves these teams are bringing to the very end of their journey. Some teams tonight, this will be the last time we will see them in season two, perhaps, if they don't make it to Vegas. It all depends on their performance tonight. Some teams are out of it, but there are other teams who are still fighting for that chance. There's a huge tie in both brackets, one bracket, bracket A, three teams with seven league points and in bracket b another team three teams with i think it's nine, nine it's nine league points nine yeah. league points that is a huge tie right here at the end couldn't have called it but it's uh it's getting tight even up until the end we had do have a few teams though that uh that will be going to vegas yep we know cunningham's we going to vegas we'll talk to them a little bit tonight after their matchup because they're in the running to go to vegas because they're number one right now mm -hmm. we'll look at the standings a little bit later but first off let's go ahead and check out what happened yesterday after all six matches river of blood defeated cazadores simp defeated <laughs> war and peace war and peace having a tough league tough league this time but uh we'll probably see him again in season three, Cat Fast Nation took out Reek Havoc, a huge upset, and actually the first victory for Cat Fast Nation. Burl Empires took down Pub Stars. Nerve destroyed Hammer Time. And in the end, Simple Tankers won over Simplistic. It was a fun matchup between those two. Always a pleasure to see Waffles, of course, and we'll get to see him one more time tonight. So some good matches, and uh, some, a couple were three and O's, but a lot of them were at least three and ones. Mm -hmm. So these teams were fighting hard, but again, the hesitation of not trying to activate and playing a little bit safe was apparent more and more. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights that happened yesterday in our backtrack. I, I don't see a draw happening. With three minutes, they got cap pressure. It's a minute it's, and a there's half. There's always there's, a chance, though. Yes. There, there's a very slim chance. But we're, uh, we're realists let, here. Let, let's talk about how uh, he could do it. So uh, if he would have taken a turn to the hill uh, and slid down the zero line unseen, uh, through those bushes, he may have got back to uh, reset cap and then maybe strung out the game, but he uh, didn't do that, and it was slim chance, if any. So, uh, unfortunately, I have to call it for and Cap Fascination. And that's Fast it. Nation. Cap Fascination defeats Reek Havoc 3-0 to zero in their first league win. Team attempt to ram. No damage done, though. And now Jen Scott tries to line up a shot against Drynitz. Hornsby, Hornsby unfortunately still blocking. Trying to block here. Oh, 224. Can Hornsby, Hornsby block, block shot? this shot? Oh this my gosh, Hornsby still trying to keep this alive here. Five One more, more shot seconds from and Jen he's Scott. reloaded. And oh, he, he hit, he hit him. Hornsby. He hit him, but I think Jen Scott missed. I think Jen Scott missed. No, I don't think I he don't fired. I don't think Jen Scott fired yet. Now, Jen Scott has the shot. He, oh my gosh. He God. wins fired. the 1v1. The L Tractor. Oh the L Tractor keeps Jen Scott alive. They're wasting time by holding off. This hesitation, I think, is well, what is killing the, them. The only unfortunate side of that is if Zazzy moved in when they were loaded, he could die very easily. As we're seeing Haywood down to three, and he's gone. Jen Scott, 49, and he's going to go down. But now they have to make a crucial move on the T32s. That 45 seconds, it may happen, but I think they'll take Dry Nets and Zazzy. 40 oh. seconds, it's very close. It is a possibility here. Trey Noob will be the first one to be focused. Dry Nets at 206. Zazzy one shot away from getting destroyed. Goon Swarm now the only take left alive. Two shots being eaten up in that from Nerve, so left. that's a huge deal. 30 seconds if left he for takes Goonstorm Dry Nets, this here. will be very, very close. Now 20 seconds left. Tanker 91 32. needs to block. Oh, and Goon Swarm blows the shot. He misses it. 14 seconds left. And now one Two. more shot. Oh, it's Stop. not a draw. Yes, Hammer I told time. you so. I told you so. Hammer Time takes it. Man, Ruka was on fire during that match. I told you so. I told you, you so. You guys were doubting me that whole time. Wow. I was like, there's still a little bit of a window. There's a chance right up until the end. We don't see it as much this season. Just because there's no eight-point rule, teams generally are more decisive earlier, or we just see it go to a draw because teams will just give up. But, I mean, there's still a chance. It happens from time to time. It was a good question. They had 10 seconds yeah. left to go, and they did pull it out. So a nice victory 
for them. Let's go ahead and check into today's matches, the five matches we have lined up for tonight. Hammer Time versus Simplistic, River of Blood versus War and Peace, No Limit versus Cunningham's, Fulcrum Gaming versus Game Over, and Simple Tankers versus the Cazadores. Tonight, Fulcrum Gaming versus Game Over is definitely the match to see because Fulcrum Gaming only has one loss so far, and Game Over has been one of the biggest uh, upsetting teams throughout the league. And a huge victory for them today, de definitely, but that's not the last game for each of these teams for Game Over and Fulcrum Gaming. Uh, game Over would have another shot to get another victory, and if they do, they are going to be very high contenders to make it to Las Vegas. If they actually beat Fulcrum tonight, that would put them at 10. Another win would put them above the 12 points with Fulcrum, mm -hmm. which Fulcrum currently has, which, uh, I mean, on the off chance Fulcrum manages to not get another win in before the end would the actually move chance. them the off yeah. chance that would actually bump them down to third place i've been looking at these standings all day we've been we've been making theories yes. and hypothetical quandaries of what would happen tonight and one of the biggest things to happen too is simpli is simplistic versus hammer time if simplistic beats hammer time then that means simple tankers has a better shot to make it into las vegas if they win Yep, their match. which and it gives a better chance for Nerve and River of Blood. Nerve and River of Blood are tied with uh, nine, nine at, with Hammer Time. Also nine for third, fourth, mm -hmm. and fifth place. So that is an interesting. We're gonna have to see how that one develops tonight, along within the other bracket game over No Limit Pub Stars being all tied. Uh, if that 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 will definitely be somewhat decided tonight. I I don't. I don't think all three of those teams are going to lose. No, there, there'll still be some, some up and downs happening in the standings. But before we go into the standings, go ahead and jump into the league rules, the rules for how 7x42 works. Also, shoot out. Randall, go ahead and take that over. Would be glad to. Our league rules, 7x42. Seven, seven players per team, 42 points for each team to work with, and every tank is equal in points to its tier. So tier 8s like the IS-3 T32 and WZ-132 are all 8 points. T1s like the T1 Cunningham and the Light Tractor are T1s. They're 1 point. So you're going to see mostly T8s and T1s. We'll be surprised if we see anything else. Every match is a best of 5, and if we don't see a winner by the end of 5 matches, which hasn't happened since week 1, we will go to our shootout rules. Our shootout does take place on Malinovka. We're going to line the teams up on the three and the five line and just have them shoot it out. Admin will declare when to fire at a random time. We don't even know. It's a surprise to both of us. And if anyone fires before the admin say so, we have to declare a winner then and there. You won't see a big explosion shootout. Uh, but shootouts can be very cool to watch. If we see one, it is quite a treat. Well, it's not a treat for the victor, though, because it's only one point. Now, a victory for one point in the shootout, it's still one point, but that is going to be devastating for some of these teams that need the three points from the best of five victory, especially in the standings they are in. So I know all these teams are going to be playing for the three-point victory, not the one, but it is the case if that does happen. Now, we hadn't had any shootouts last week, none so far this week. We saw a lot of shootouts in week number one, but I feel a lot of teams are actually using the non-existence of the eight-point rule to their advantage of being more aggressive mm -hmm. earlier on in the maps compared to having that five-minute reset that we talk about a lot. Although we've even had less draws. We've been, I've been looking at the yep. statistics for Season 2. We're, draws have been less and less as the weeks go on. Teams are becoming more decisive, which is very cool. And exactly. that's part of why we're not seeing any uh, shootouts. Let's go ahead and jump into the standings for what's happening right now in the league play. Randall, I'll have you go over the Alpha Division. Would be glad to. Bracket A, led by the Cunninghams currently with 15 league points. They are on their seventh match tonight. Fulcrum Gaming, having only played five battles, is at 12 points. They still have two in the rest of the season. For third, fourth, and fifth place, we have Game Over, No Limit, and The Pub Stars, all with seven points. Bernal Empires will take up sixth place with six league points. Wreak Havoc will be tied for sixth uh, with six points themselves, and Cat Fascination brings up the rear with three league points. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the Bravo division. Simp is currently leading that division with 16 league points. Simple Tanker is right behind them with 12. Hammer Time at 9, Nerve at 9, and tying up for third place at 9 points will be River of Blood. The Cinderella story once again of WGLNA. Cazadores is at six with two wins and three losses. Simplistic, who we'll be seeing tonight against Hammer Time for the first match, is at four. And War and Peace, unfortunately with no wins, is at six losses and zero league points. That does it for the standings. Of course, all this is important because this is going to determine which teams will be joining us 
to Las Vegas. Now, the top three teams are guaranteed to make it to Vegas. The fourth and fifth team of each division will face each other. The fourth of Alpha will face the fifth of Bravo and vice versa. And in those playoffs, those two winners will be joining us in Vegas as well, rounding out the top eight. Now, before we have the playoffs, which will happen Sunday, we will be having the tiebreakers, which will be aired. Now, depending on how many tiebreakers there are, some we might not be able to air. We'll only have to... Well, I think we had the three or four last time. Yeah, we three or four sounds about reasonable for what we should have because then we have yeah. the two tiebreakers making it five matches for the night. We could go to six, but that's going to be a long depends. broadcast. Seven is a, a little Sunday. bit much for the players. Well, though. that's going to depend on today and tomorrow mm -hmm. as well. I mean, there is an, a possibility that we only have one tiebreaker for each division. Maybe none. Depends. It's just it's, it's going to depend on where the points lie here. And I think that shootout point has really uh, kind of set a pace for some of these teams um, that – if they had only had a win instead of a shootout, then it would be a completely different story yeah. later on in, in the season, which is where we are now. This is day number two of week three. We only have one more regular day tomorrow night, and then after that, it's Sunday, tiebreakers and the playoffs. Now, they are going to be competing for $100,000, and this huge prize pool, $50,000 goes to first place. Fulcrum Gaming took it last season in a great fashion, but a well-fought fashion against Simple Tankers and Simp. And we're going to find out who's going to be joining us very, very soon. Now, also, we want to remind everybody that you can join us in Las Vegas. And we do have a promo code now for the hotel. This will be at Treasure Island. And the promo code is WARGAME. There will be a special price, as you see at the bottom of the screen. And also, for more information about WGLNA, make sure to follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and also watch all the VODs and get more information about the league at WGLNA. Dot com. We really hope you can make it out to Vegas. We had a lot of fun in Season 1. Treasure Island was a nice place to be. We had a beautiful set and a great crowd and some amazing tanks matches. And I look forward to who's going to be joining us in Season 2. And what better way uh, to celebrate than to have Randall there with his hat as well. He's going to be there. Yeah, I, w I uh, also made a promise to some players earlier today uh, about my hat, which is I will remove it if I see a light tracker kill in IS-3. All right, well, there's a that's, goal. There's a goal. a goal. There's a goal. Yeah. And it's uh, possible. It is possible. Well, speaking of Vegas and, and betting right now, mm -hmm. uh, we're also compiling all of the points right now. Everyone that's participated in chat for season two, the top 10 people that have been betting and have the most amount of points that are not players will receive 2,000 gold and seven days of premium for World of Tanks. Also, the top leader, yep. the one leader that has the most points, We'll receive the 2,000 gold, the seven days in premium, and a premium tank. So tonight and tomorrow are the nights to place your bets, and Sunday as well. We will announce a winner on Sunday. Well, that does it for the intro, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, the first match of the night, Hammer Time versus Simplistic. Stay tuned. Welcome back to WGLNA. I'm Clutch, showing by Rukel, and we're about ready to have our first matchup tonight, Hammer Time versus Simplistic. The face-off is ready. The team captains are going to join us. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to guys. the final week here. Hammer Time, Drynitz, we're going to start with you. Glad to have you on webcam. You are 3-2. and two. You have a win against River of Blood, War and Peace, and Simple Tankers. And you have two losses against Simp and Nerve. You're up against Simplistic, who has been performing better and better throughout this season. Your thoughts, your feelings for your team in week number three and for this match against Simplistic. Well, there's no team to overlook in this tournament. All the teams are good. Um, as far as Simplistic goes, really didn't uh, watch too many videos by them, but uh, hopefully we'll be all right. Yesterday we didn't play very well, and I think we should be able to do a little better tonight. We went over some stuff. Now, are the stakes pretty high for you guys tonight? Because you do have one more match after this, I believe, in order to make it into Vegas. So how important to you is a win tonight? Oh, it's very important. I mean, if, as long as we win one of, the more, one of the matches, it will at least be in the top five, I believe. We have a good chance of making top five as is, so at least we'll have a playoff spot. Um, but if we can win out, then we should be in the top uh, two or three. All right. Well, best of luck so. to you. Good attitude to have. Jump on over to Waffles from Simplistic. First off, Waffles, can you tell me a little bit more about your professional relationship with Big Dave? 
Uh, you know, uh, he's picked us up as a sponsor, which we're excited about. Uh, you know, Simplistic's been looking for a sponsor all year. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't get any more American than uh, the CEO Waffles and uh, Big Dave. So, uh, you know, we uh, we sat down, a couple beers. Uh, he gave me this sweet limited edition Big Dave's cowboy hat. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I was going to wear it, but it doesn't fit with the headphones. Um, so, yeah, you know, we're excited, we're excited to move on. Uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be back in the WGLNA. Well, we're going to be relegated anyway. Uh, so hopefully we can fight our way back so, you know, we can make Big Dave proud. You know, I'm sure he'll want to see us uh, in the limelight. So, Well, as Big Dave would say, cool. But we, cool. Look for, <laughs> we look forward to seeing. I've been practicing seeing... that. Me and him, me and him, he's been giving me pointers. I've been yeah. practicing it. He's been doing that for a while now. For yeah. a while now. But, uh, well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that you have formed a, a good business practice partnership and friendship with Big Dave. But for tonight's match, uh, out of curiosity, has Simple Tanker said, hey, if you guys win this, you're going to allow us to have a better shot at Vegas? Or uh, You know, man, there's been a lot of people coming into our chat uh, today. Uh, you know, we know we're going to be relegated. Uh, you know, that's unavoidable at this point mathematically. Uh, so, you know, we get the interesting opportunity to play spoil sport. Uh, you know, sometimes in a lot of sports leagues, you see the guys that really don't have uh, you know, they've got nothing left to lose, essentially. You know, they do big things. Uh, so we're going to try tonight. River of Blood is the the big one that, you know, came in and uh, got into our channel and said, you know, help us punch our own ticket, beat these guys tonight. So. I see. I see. I wonder if that would happen. And, you know, you guys, Simp, River of Blood, you have a good relationship. So it's not out of the ordinary. But we, we do want you and Hammer Time to have the best match tonight. So do you have any words for Drainitz and Hammer Time before we start this match? Man, I mean, I don't know. I hope you guys play better than you did against Nerve last night because we beat them and they beat you pretty hard. So, Trying to any response? Uh, we should do better. Uh, was, I blame Kriegs for that. He wasn't there and he usually helps me out quite a bit uh, taking care of the T1s. So I don't have to worry about that. So we should do a lot better tonight. We have him back. Drynitz, you have the higher seed. Heads or tails on the coin flip? Heads. Heads is the call, and it is heads, so will you choose map or defer? I'll defer. They will defer. Waffles, what will be your map choice? Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf will be the first map, and what will be your spawn position, Hammer Time? Oh, uh, let's try south. They're going to try the south. Simplistic will spawn to the north on Himmelsdorf. Gentlemen, best of luck, and Simplistic, thank you for participating in the league. We wish you the best of luck in all your endeavors. Thank you, guys. Taking a look at these tanks, would you believe it? Simple, uh, simplistic, bringing a KV-5. Three IS-3s and a 5100. I love seeing a KV-5. We don't see much of those at all in Season 2. We saw a few of them in Season 1. On the other side, Hammer Time bringing a very normal setup, much less entertaining. 5100s, IS-3s, super solid. Let's see how that... KV-5 stacks up against this. We did see Art of War bring a KV-5 last week, Rukil. Unfortunately, you were under the weather, and it proved out to be a victory for them, at least in that battle. Was it on Himmelsdorf? Um, no, I want to say it was on Ruinburg, but or maybe it was Ensk. Hmm. I know it was a city map, but we did have it on one of our backtracks as one of the highlights, and that was really fun to see. I'm pretty sure it was not Himmelsdorf, though. Now we have Tanker 91 and Photo Finish. They're going to be covering this tank alley in G-Line. And Kriegs, who was mentioned by Hammer Time here to take care of the T1s, he's going to scout a lot of tanks on this push on the western front. And he's going to still stay alive moving past the courtyard. That is going to force the red team, Hammer Time, to move from their hill position and go down to defend their flag cap since this western push is going to continue from Simplistic. Yeah, it looks like Simplistic has actually left Schooly in the Amex to do 100 behind, and he might have to hunt down Kriegsmaster in the T1 because Kriegsmaster appears to be booking it straight for the North Cap. He may even make it. No, he's going to stop short, it looks like. But he could have made it all the way to Cap before the members of Simplistic that are moving south would have been able to even close on the cap. They're getting there. They're about 10, 20 seconds out, and they're going to do a cap fast. Waffles and Whiskey Dot are going to be shielded by Art of War, and I believe uh, Roddy said something about a puppy nest being... A puppy nest. A puppy nest. Puppy nest. Like, okay. yes. 
being, uh, he did, that's what he described this little position that the KV-5 is going to form. Just a little nest for these puppy T1s. Well, that's a really good position for the KV-5 to be since now the 5100s from Hammer Time have to move in along with the IS-3. They are going to trade some blows. Speed Weaponry takes a shot in his IS-3, and he's going to meet the aggression head-on, slowing down the fire coming in from Hammer Time. This Speed is... Weaponry's taking another shot, though, and now 14 seconds left on the clock. Can they do it, Rukel? Tanker 91 is booking it through, but this cap screening is incredibly potent. You see how Tanker 91 has had to burn his kit uh, after being tracked just to get to the cap. Photo Finish made it to the cap, but he's at 166 hit points. Now Tanker 91 is going to go down trying to stop the cap. There are five seconds on red base capture, blue base, blue base capture at four seconds. Now NYPD has gone all the way in, going so deep, but blue base is captured. It looks like Hammer Time will take this. Wow. That ninja approach from Hammer Time. I wasn't even looking on that side of the map. I was watching NYPD in his 5100 trying to take down those T1s. So the t which, which tank captured that side? It was a T1. I was talking about that right at the beginning yes. of the map. That was the T1. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the post-game stats and go look for the tanks that have the cap points. All right. We have Overlord Prime in mm -hmm. a T1. He has 24 cap points. 41 cap points for Kriegsmaster. He was a T1 running straight up the middle. And on top of that, Drynitz in the 5100 was on cap. You had three tanks on cap in the north, and the remaining tanks for Hammer Time just booked it straight through. They didn't care about the cap screening, and if if we hadn't seen that kind of a split out of Hammer Time, they would not have won. Yeah. They would have lost the fight following the attempt to cap. I think Simplistic made a cool strat, very aggressive, bold, uh, it probably would have worked, but they should have left someone at home to stop the cap. Well, it was tough, but the mm. split, as you said, from hammer time instead of the full-on aggression for defense, you had a little bit of offense, and sometimes a good offense is the best defense, and that's what we saw. It was a battle win for hammer time. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. We come back. Battle number two of hammer time after simplistic after this. Simplistic, you glorious tankers. Two KV-5s this time, two IS-3s, and a 5100 for Simplistic. Whilst Hammer Time will be bringing a much more standard lineup again, three IS-3s, two AMX 5100s, and take a look, it's a little tractor. Well, 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 gentlemen, what's better than one KV-5? Two for twice the price. And that's what we're going to see out of Simplistic. Now, Hammer Time is spawning to the south in the red. Simplistic is up there in the north, as you see on your screen. Beautiful mini map again, detailing where both tanks are. You only find that right here at WGLNA. I want to thank Colby for putting that together. He's a whiz when it comes to the UI and coding. I actually did some uh, coding in college when I had a full ride scholarship to the United States Air Force to be a computer engineer. What did you learn? I learned how to make an ATM from machine from scratch, and I learned that this is incredibly difficult. It's not something I want to do with my life, and I fully appreciate anyone who does. What language did you learn? Uh, it was Blue Jay, so it was JavaScript. Mm. Java's okay. I learned, uh, I learned a few languages in, uh, in college, but mostly useless. One of them was uh, Visual Basic. And Visual Basic is completely and totally useless. Well, I speak uh, three languages fluently. One is English, two is Spanish, and the third is womanizing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a language, Clutch. Oh, trust me, it is. It's oh. more about the body language. Well, but I'll take your word for that one. Take your 91 photo finish and dry knits. Their body language now is defense as they're going to hold up in this position right behind these buildings as we're going to see simple tankers moving against the flag. You know what? I am so excited to see this play because what better way to go out with the bang, even if they're not able to win, at least have some fun. Uh, excuse me, simplistic, not simple tankers. I keep it's easy that. to confuse that. Clutch. I know. So I know. easy. I, you heard me say it all. I dropped it a little bit before just saying they were simple tankers, but they are simplistic and they are pushing straight across the tracks. Just something you never, ever see and they are going to leave Speed Weaponry on cap, whilst three tanks, Artivore, Mega Earth, and Bryant, are going to push across cap. Schooly is booking it south as quickly as humanly possible. There's a bounce on Mega Earth, and NYPD bouncing one shot, and there goes Tanker 91 already in this fight. NYPD has a great flank with the AMX 5100, lining up some shots against the IS-3s. Artivore is still going to try to stay in the fight, trying to draw photo finish and Drynitz's 
a fire away from the other IS-3s. He does land another shot against NYPD, and here comes Schooley to clean up NYPD. A beautiful play from Schooley. And now the other 5100, Zazi has taken a couple hits. He's going to be charging in from the other side. And this may be a win for Simplistic, as there's only two heavy tanks left on the battlefield, and Drynitz and Zazi are both a little bit less than half health. Zazi at 759, so a little bit above, and now Drynitz is one hit away. And the IS-3 tries to line up the shot. Bryant, will he be able to take it, or will he go down and McGirth cleans it up? Ooh, it looks like it's a bounce from Drynitz on McGirth, so Bryant's going to get the cleanup kill. Speed weaponry now, and the KV-5 is going to be on the chase against Zazi. You know... At the same time, the T1's Whiskey Dot and Waffles were even able to get a win in a T1 fight to the north. So wins on all fronts by Simplistic. They look so dominant in this. And you know what I think it was? It was those KV-5s, yep. those hit points. The hit points indeed, and that actually adds a couple extra shots to the 5100s. Mm -hmm. That makes them maybe second guess their targets. And because of that, you keep the IS-3s alive. Yep. And they are the main damage dealers in that lineup. KV-5 okay damage but it's mainly about the hit point the hit points like you said it's a moving wall and if you can get a couple tanks behind it or if it sets up a side flank one it's outpouring damage against the enemy and two the enemy is not going to move into that position it cuts off an avenue of fire and not just with one but with two kv5s cuts off two avenues so the is3s could focus on their targets go ahead and jump into an instant replay here as we see the push against the train tracks from Simplistic. Why not take the fight to them, Ruko? Well, they decided to. Very smart. This approach could have been so risky, but Hammer Time was not expecting it at all. And what reason to? This would be absurd in any other matchup. No team plays like this. We haven't seen an east side play from any team this season almost. And we've never seen an across the tracks push into the east side camp from Simplistic and, or any team, I don't think. This is just a matchup and a spot on the map. We never see a battle. KV-5s absorbing numerous shots. One of them was even sitting on cap for a while, creating a nice distraction for himself. We saw bounces and misses all over the place. Damage getting spread out fantastically for Simplistic. Tanks backing off at the appropriate times. This KV-5 even staying alive long enough to absorb one more solid hit before going down. Also. Note that Schooley came into this fight at a crucial time. Exactly. One of the 5100s was reloading, could not return fire. Schooley was able to keep his health points up and dish out damage. Tons and tons of damage, just mountains of damage on these IS-3s and in finishing up at 5100. This fight, just, it was all about the timing, the hit points. Uh, it's Hammer Time was clearly caught off guard. They were this. caught off guard. That means Simplistic and Hammer Time are now tied up. One to one in match number one for tonight. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, battle number three will continue after this. Turn to cap. Now, with this, you're probably going to see a third, a thirteen ninety spot. Another one can probably get the damage needed from very far away. But it might be, it might sacrifice one of these thirteen nineties. And you see NYPD is moving up to the hill. From the hill, they have perfect shots on cap and so you will see Zazzy spot and you will see NYPD be the tank that will uh, attempt to actually shoot and stop the cap from way outside of spot. It is a matter of seconds from the official time clock going to zero 31 right now to 36 it's about six to seven seconds in between here um, on the difference maybe just about five depends right when the base is going to be captured here 62 percent 19 seconds left Zazi, maybe the one to move up quicker here to get the scouting run. He definitely will be the one to spot. You can see NYPD on the screen now, is lined up, and on the other side, you're going to see, you're going to have to switch back and forth really fast to see this. Oh, clip. they get the shot. There will be a reset. That means we're going to go into the next battle with a draw, and that's all they can do. Pershing's going to take a little more damage, and the clock's going to run out. Oh, man, that was close between both those tankers. Mm -hmm. Simplistic pushing in. Beautiful play by the T-32. Locking down that Pershing and the T-69 in that one position. It's a two-on-one, and that allowed those tanks to come over the hill, get the surround on the Pershing and the T-69, and isolate them and destroy them. That is how you use the T-32. It's that positional ground, using that hold-down position, and then allowing your teammates to move in for the flank. And here is the flank incoming right now this was this was a great play from simplistic mm -hmm. but i wish that they had 
made the Pershings go further south instead of chasing the 1390s earlier. I don't think they also took into consideration Hammer Time's tanks further to the south. And so I think maybe this was an overmatch that was a bit heavy. Uh, in that position, maybe four tanks going in there, one tank maybe going to try and, uh, similar to screening, just putting his attention towards the other Hammer Time tanks, and you see how the members of Simplistic are stuck in low ground. They don't have the high ground advantage at all. And so these Pershings, the Pershings don't get to use their hull down, mm -hmm. they don't use their gun depression to their advantage, and they don't get to use their view range to their advantage in that fight. It becomes very close, very well fought, and it definitely, the fight went to simplistic but the match sorry the, but the battle will go to a draw because hammer time members were able to salvage a draw out of that they yeah. probably would not have been able to win salvage that. is the perfect word let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break we come back we're going to jump into battle number four of hammer time versus simplistic after this gonna go around that's not a bad idea i think they might opt for a draw or they're going to try and make it to the other side of the map try and maybe see if they find members of simplistic over there whiskey dodd and v1 doberman have made a very smart choice not falling for that trap now, I don't know if they had a good enough indication, but they were they were smart enough to recognize, you know, there's a very large potential for there to be an ambush waiting further to our south. Let's not aggress further there. Whiskey Dot has split from B1 Doberman, and Whiskey is heading to the west, whereas NYPD and Zazzy are also heading that way. They could meet up, but with the amount of hit points left on NYPD and Zazzy, a single T1 could take them out very easily if given the opportunity. However, return fire, any of those 1390s easily could take out Whiskey. He's at 232 hit points. You know, Simplista could be playing for the draw mm -hmm. and play for the draw the next game to bring Hammer Time to a shootout oh. to deny them the two extra points. Oh, I didn't allowing realize Allowing River that. of Blood, if they win, mm -hmm. to overcome the tied up nine league points for those three teams. That would be, that would be so devastating to hammer time that would severely affect their chances of being able to make it to vegas and there's the draw the time does run out we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break because pretty much what happened was a surround and then the 1390s yeah. took off yeah and an engagement away. And that's it that was it that's it let's go ahead and take a quick break we come back battle number five simplistic versus hammer time after this Out of these two teams, Simplistic has decided to bring two 5100s, two IS-3s, and a 1390. We're going to see an identical lineup out of Hammer Time, opting for the same lineup. We're going to have to see how this plays out. I'm going to just follow Whiskey Dot because there's going to be an opening scout run. I'm saying it's going to be down the mid. Whiskey's got the jump. He's in the north on Ruinberg. Every advantage on the scouting run right there. And it's, we're going to see Zazzy going to make a similar scouting run, I can see. But he's going to be uh, on the losing side of this. He's probably going to have to back off following Whiskey's immediate aggressions. Look at this nice, uh, very clean uphill scout run. Returning Zazzy going to actually come right in behind. He might back off early, knowing that, that there's potential for him to take damage. There he does. Very smart move. Zazzy not getting over aggressive right at the beginning of his 1390, risking any health points at all. He's going to back off. Very smart. Zazzy and the AMX 1390 cruising across the way here. This is the proper way to play. You don't want to go straight over that road. And now the lineup of Hammer Time is going to be towards the west in the city. Zazzy is going to continue to scout around on these different sides here. And because of his mobility, he's able to get to those areas very, very quickly. That's part of the strengths of the 1390s. You can see the stats. He has performed not too bad at this tank. And Bryant 21 destroys Krug. Krieg's Master, not Krug's Master, from Mr. Kruger's Christmas, which is a great Christmas film. Uh, Tanker 91 is going to reset along with some of his teammates away from that side because, hey, if he got killed, there's probably more than one tank in that area, and we're going to back up. Did he spot any tanks when he was uh, over there? Uh, I was staying on Zazi at the time. Mm -hmm. I know he spotted at least one. I don't know if he spotted any more than that. I didn't get to notice any light bulbs myself. I was also following Whiskey Dot as he went to the west because I was feeling like because Whiskey was going to rejoin the remaining members of Simplistic, the blue team, that there was potential there for a push, recognizing that Zazzy, the red team, mm -hmm. uh, Hammer Time, was a little bit split. You had Zazzy way off in the east and four other members in the west. You no longer have that case because Hammer Time is going to head off to the east, now recognizing that Simple Tankers 
blue team is in the northwest, so the Delta Village is probably open. It is completely open, but that's going to be the main target for Hammer Time and the Red to move to that section. And it's going to take them a little bit to get there, but they're going to go for the most eastern approach as they do try to line it up. Waffles is the only one close enough to be able to spot some Delta Village play, but these tanks from Simple Tankers are going to have to be not very cautious when they move to that section to allow themselves to, uh, or simplicity, excuse me, to allow themselves to get in that area. I keep calling sometimes simplistic simple tank. It's so easy. I mean, simp puns for different names. Simposaurus Rex. Simplistic. Simtastic. Exactly. They have all sorts of names like that. Then they just love to mess with us. I'm sure they love it whenever we mess our names up. Uh, because <laughs> I'm sure Modable loved it. Uh, Modable. <laughs> loved it when you called him that. Uh, yeah, first the, cast for World of, of Tanks. One of the first broadcasts I did for World of Tanks after China of last year. Uh, we had a skirmish, and Millard uh, contacted me on Skype because I posted in the forum said, Hey guys, I've commentated uh, tanks, and if you guys have any uh, tournaments you would like a broadcaster to commentate for, just let me know. And Millard, uh, shout out to him, he contacted me and said, Hey, we're doing skirmish number seven. And then Wargaming contacted me for my information, and they put up a post on the Wargaming website. And we had the broadcast, it's a lot of fun. Now, some of the simp guys, their names I was unfamiliar with. Uh, completely because Fulcrum was the team that I knew the most from the United States. Mm -hmm. And you hadn't had a chance to even meet no, any of us. No. We didn't meet you and I was on actually the team that you did that you casted and when we and went up went back and watched it because we were super excited. We're like, we're gonna get our game casted? This is such a big deal. We've never had this on the North American server at all. Never had that at all and it was such a cool thing to have someone cast our games. And, uh, and when you, we called him Modable, we started yelling him Modable just as a joke for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, uh, his real, it goes by Moadib, mm -hmm. but a, I called him Modable just because I had to read his name quickly. Drynitz destroys the T1 Waffles, and now here's going to be the push in. Zazi leading the charge all the way to the north, while the two heavy tanks, the IS-3s, will be leading in in the C quadrant, now coming up along the 5 line, getting closer to the flag, but schooling the 5100 is scouted and he's going to be in a great defensive position along with the rest of the heavy tanks. Art of War, however, is going to the south. Whiskey Dodd takes on Overlord Prime, and now a flag cap could happen to the south for Simplistic. Yeah, Simplistic has a huge advantage. We saw this earlier today on the first map on Himmelsdorf, a split out of Hammer Time able to get them a cap victory. Now we might see Simplistic, the blue team, win because they have a split and the potential for cap victory. Whiskey Dot is returning to the north. He's going to have a fantastic flank as IS-3s are going to begin their cap pressure. Schooly is going to get into position to stop that cap. He's going to wait as long as possible. There's only one tank actually putting the cap pressure on right now. Art of War is putting the pressure on. And Whiskey Dot is staying in the Delta Village, which I think is a smart idea instead of staying on the flag, perhaps, even mm -hmm. though the time would have gone a lot faster, to slow down anyone incoming to stop that flag. And Zazi is going to be the only one, and will Whiskey Dot spot him out? He will not yet, but Whiskey Dot's going to get in a bush, so he will have first spot on Zazi as he returns. And just a moment, it looks like Whiskey's looking about the right way. He actually fires over to Drynets. He does spot Zazzy. Zazzy, though, is going to get the jump. Whiskey Dot has fired twice. He will not be able to kill Zazzy in his reload. He will, though, need to stop this Amex 1390 from actually returning. And Art of War may need to actually just run away, salvage his tank, and uh, more than just the cap or anything like that. Whiskey Dot, though, ah, look at this. He's going to return north. Now there's a 5v4. And Whiskey's going to get to put damage out on Drynets possibly, whilst it looks like we should see a push out of the remaining members of Simplistic, but we're not. They're holding back. They've taken too much damage. Oh, Whiskey Dot, another miss against Drynets. He is able to hit him one more time, but he's going to have to back away and get out of there quickly because Zazi could move in from the south to get the flank against him. But Brian and Primus understanding that two tanks now are to the south, need to push up against the isolated tanks of hammer time in order to get a couple more kills before the reinforcements of Drynitz and Zazi move to the north. Now take a look at this. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in this battle. If this goes to a draw, we see a shootout. And I think Simplistic might be content with that kind of an outcome for this battle. Just look at the way they're playing it. They're not getting too aggressive. They're not risking that loss. And like they said before, this is a chance for them to crush the dreams of hammer time. They can just crush their chances of getting to 
Vegas, and it looks like they're going to try and do that. IS-3 is backing off. Whiskey Dodd is all the way in the one line now. He's returning south, probably predicting that Zazzy is somewhere in that area, and it looks like we might see cap pressure from Hammer Time again. There, there's the cap pressure. Yeah, this cap pressure, though, is going to be very, very crucial here. Because where the position is on the IS-3, yes, he is slightly open to some fire just And Zazzy and Whiskey Dog will actually find each other by accident. Whiskey Dog gets tracked, and Zazzy gets two shots off, whereas now he's going to take another shot from an IS-3 Brian that is... 21 is the one that's close to him. Mm -hmm. And he will get a fantastic shot off. Zazzy has to take over. Brian's going to close the distance. Whiskey Dog waiting for Brian to come around, and cat pressure is happening. There is Zazzy down to 170, and Whiskey finishes him off. This is actually a chance for Simplistic to even win this battle. Actually, no. Schooly goes down back to even. Four tier eights versus four tier eights. Primus, though, is at a minuscule amount of health. 28 hit points for the FD100, but he's still alive. That's what counts. And that fire is coming from NYPD and Photo Finish here at the Northern Village, a great spot to try to stop those reinforcements moving in against the two IS3s just around the corner. And then continue that flag cap pressure, but they're going to have to put more than one tank out there now because it's going to be really, really close if there's another reset. Whiskey Dodd does get to the corner of E6, and he will look to the north. I don't think he's spotted anything yet. He's actually not peeking out quite enough yet. I'm waiting for him to do that. Although he may just be holding on to stop the cap at the crucial moment, a minute and ten on the cap right now. And now two tanks officially on the cap. 30 seconds left on the clock as Tanker 91 and Drynitz are going to move in just around the corner. They're going to hug. The side of these buildings, NYPD and Photo Finish are lined up to get some good shots on any tanks that do move out of that corner. One shot hits Bryant. McGirth tries to line up a shot against Tinker 91. He will be able to get at least one reset on these tanks. Oh, a nice shot into McGirth. There is a reset, but 38 seconds now. Another shot into McGirth, and McGirth goes down. This could be a win for Hammer Time. It looks like another shot missed against McGirth. And Whiskey Dot goes down as he just books it north. Primus Bryant are still alive. Bryant not looking like he wants to take any hits, but McGirth still at 300 hit points. One average roll from an AMX 5100 will kill McGirth, and McGirth looks like he's going to start reverse angling. He does give a flat front, though, to a few tanks. Will he load an HE round? Nice shot by Photo Finish from across the way, and another shot from Tanker 91, leaving Bryant 21 the only one left alive. However, Wait, the cap there was a reset. Uh, if, if I... Can a 5100 actually reduce this cap when he gets on? Three plus eight seconds left. That will be enough time. Can Bryant get a shot off to make this go to a draw? Looks like he won't. And that's Yes, is the Blue Race is captured. Hammer time with one second to spare is able to get three victory points instead of just one or none in a potential shootout. By a uh, hair, they're able to do it. The slimmest of times and windows. Those tanks should have moved in a little bit sooner to get the flag yeah. points, but they wanted to make sure no other tanks would be there to harass Drynets because he was so low in his IS-3. That was so close the whole time as well. It could have gone either way, even until the last 30 seconds, the last 10 seconds. It still could have gone to a draw. And it's, it's amazing how Battles in World Tanks can change like this. You can see it right here. A shot hitting Primus. You just saw an IS-3 go down. Now there's only one IS-3 left. And this, yeah, I would say, why not go for it when you're Bryant? But, you know, maybe no time. And an HE round. I think an HE round out of Megarth could have actually made this go to a draw and actually made us see a shootout. Simplistic had a chance to punch Hammer Time in the nose, but Hammer Time shows their skill. They deserve to, to go to Vegas, and they will have a chance. They have a very solid chance now. They will have, what is that? They will have uh, 12 points? Mm -hmm. With four wins, and none of them were a shootout, so yes, mm -hmm. 12 points, and they still have one more match to go, and that's tomorrow. We'll have to check the schedule to see who they're up against. But very, very good win for, for Hammer Time. Simplistic with some fun meta with the KV-5s. Unfortunately, not able to win or bring it to a shootout. Mm -hmm. So the next battle that we're going to have, the next match, is going to be River of Blood versus War and Peace. This is going to be the final appearance for both these teams. And if River of Blood does have a win and maybe has a little bit of luck, they could join us in Vegas. War and Peace, however, this will be the last time we will see them for Season 2. So let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. When we come back, River of Blood versus War and Peace. Stay tuned.